Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome. It's Sally Cathcart here from the Curious Piano Teachers, and welcome to Tuesday Teaching Tips. And today, I've I've put this slightly enigmatic title. I've been sitting here for about half an hour thinking, what do I call this? And I've actually wrote down in my book, "We Are the Sound Makers," because I was working with a student last week, and it came out, "We Are the Sound Makers, not the piano." Without us, the piano makes no sound. Listen, not a thing. So in order to create the sound, that's down to us, isn't it? The piano is not going to do it by itself. And all the piano can do is reflect back to us what we put in it. So it's so important that when we're working with the piano and we're working with pupils, we help them actually realise the sound here before they realise it here. Yeah, if we just rely on the fingers and the eye to read the notation and go straight to the fingers, then what's getting bypassed is that ear. And the ear is absolutely at the core, absolutely the core. You cannot play the piano, well you can play the piano without listening, but you're not creating music if you're not listening. So three, three steps I think that are absolutely fundamental before you play the piano, two steps actually, and the third one is playing the piano. The first one is to sing. It doesn't matter what, what level you're at, I'm not just talking about kiddies here, I'm talking all the way up. And I don't mean particularly operatic singing, I don't particularly mean fine singing. It could just be dum de dum de dum de dum dum de dum de dum Oh, I'm almost singing the arches there, but not to worry. It's, it's the dum de dum And in fact, I love my orchestra that I play in. The conductor has exactly the same approach. It sounds a mess, you know, so everybody stops. And he says, can you sing your part? So we all sit there going da 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 Da, 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 da. And you know, it's so much better when we pick our instruments up again. Do you know why that is? It's because we actually get clarity. We get clarity about what's on the page and how it's going to sound rather than relying on this. Sorry, I'm playing my viola now. Rather than relying on this or relying on these. So first thing is to sing because singing gives you a clarity of intention. The second thing that really gives you the clarity of intention, and this is so often missed out, so often, um, because it's hard work, but it's so good. And that is what we call in the UK internalisation. I also call it for children, the thinking voice. Yeah, it's the inner voice. And in America, I think it's called audiation. It's the same thing. It's to internalise the sound, because without an internal representation of the sound, you're just guessing, aren't you, what you want the piano to sound like. Okay, And that's why we tend to rely on the piano so much, because we don't really know what we want it to sound like. So sing first and then internalise that. So have it in your head so that your head, in your brain, you have a scaffold for that sound. And then the third place is then to realise it on the piano. And you'll find Notice the use of that word realise, because you are bringing it to life when you take it to the piano. You're not relying on the piano to bring it to life. You are taking it to the piano. You already know it. And the piano is just your means of expression. However, it's just as live and just as valid in here as it is here. And you'll find that if when you do that, actually things start to flow. Technique unlocks. A lot of technical problems are caused by actually not listening and not being uh, aware of the sound that you are creating. Um, I was reading this book and um, I'm afraid I never know how to pronounce their, their names, but um, Gis King and Lima and it's Piano Technique. Um, and in this very book, he says, you know, one of the most important bases and he's talking about his teaching here. One of the most important bases upon which it is built is the training of the ear. And as pianists, oh, we get to miss out on that training of the ear so, so easily. So it doesn't matter whether you're working with a beginner or whether you're working with somebody who is a little bit further up. For example, I've got a Bartok dance here, which is an early intermediate piece, you know, um, and it's the one that has... And melody so why not sing it because that comes back three times and if you can sing it in sol fa all the better if not you can dum de dum de dum one of the things about this piece is that, that three time that three repetition each time the articulation is different so sing it with
with the articulation and then realise it with your fingers. So that could be working with an intermediate student, working with an advanced student even more vital because everybody gets themselves in knots about their technique and actually it's often not the technique, often the problem is they don't know the score well enough and if they don't know the score well enough up here then the the technique will get in knots, the body will get in knots because it is just so uncertain. And again, I'm going to come back to this book and he says, um, an indispensable necessity when training the ear is an accurate knowledge of the piece of music to be studied. Okay, an accurate knowledge of the piece of music to be studied. And here's a little challenge for you that I gave to my uh, Oxford piano group a, a week or so ago and I can see somebody from the Oxford piano group is watching at the moment. So um, we had a session together and I asked everybody to say without looking at their music what the key was, what the time signature was, can they play the first bar of the piece from memory? Okay, can you go to the piano now, right now, and play the first bar of a piece of music that you are currently learning from memory because that will show you really how dependent you are on the score rather than the ear. Okay, end of Tuesday teaching tips for today. Thank you all so much for watching and uh, happy teaching. I'm about to start mine this afternoon wherever you are in the world. Hope it's a good one. Bye bye.